Anybody who has been watching the housing market knows it's a tale of two regions. On one hand, you have prices falling off a cliff in the southern markets, most notably Florida and Texas, while in the Midwest and Northeast, that couldn't be further from the truth as prices keep pushing up past all-time highs despite higher rates, taxes, and insurance. The bubble that emerged in the post-2020 world is undoubtedly imploding in markets like Austin, Cape Coral, Punta Gorda, and even Phoenix. These markets are truly crashing, and you can see for yourself by looking at the charts. In each of those those respective cities, home values have dropped 23%, 19%, 14%, and 10% from their peaks. These aren't minor pullbacks, they are sustained declines nearing the magnitude of the 2008 housing crash. But this video isn't about that, it's about the rest of the country, middle America, spots like Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago, and Pittsburgh where the impact of 2020 has been felt in a much larger way. For years after the 2008 crash, these regions were hit hard. Job losses, population decline, and flat home prices. Take Cleveland. If you bought at the peak in February 2006, your home wouldn't recover its value until mid-2019, a 13-year wait just to break even. But as bad as Cleveland's perception became in the national spotlight, the truth was that in a lot of these Rust Belt cities, you can find some incredibly affordable deals in the surrounding suburbs. It may have not been the most glamorous place to live, but the Rust Belt became associated with affordability, and then 2020 happened. The stagnant affordable market became a hotbed for speculation and exponential value growth. Take this middle-class suburb of Cleveland. Here, a home in 2017 would have cost a buyer around $167,000. Today, that number is $314,000. But the true damage isn't captured by just this price data. Most people, as you know, purchase a home with a mortgage, which means that adjusted for rates and prices, the monthly payment differences between today and 2017 is even worse than what this graph suggests. In 2017, a buyer was paying as low as $950 a month for a typical home in this neighborhood. Today, that number is closer to $2,200 a month, assuming a 20% down payment. So essentially, nearly everything in the Midwest and Northeast has more than doubled when it comes to housing, and unlike the South, there seems to be no end in sight. Affordability, the hallmark of this region, is disappearing and people are starting to ask, aside from speculation, what's actually keeping these markets so strong? The truth is, many Rust Belt cities have quietly become some of the best performing housing markets in the country. That's not exaggeration. We've seen year after year of steady price appreciation driven by persistently low inventory. Contrast that with these so-called hot markets. Even in places like Nashville, where prices are basically flat year over year, the underlying weakness is still obvious. Inventory has now surpassed 2019 levels, signaling that further price declines like those already happening in Florida and Texas are entirely possible, but in Rust Belt markets, you don't see that same pattern. Take Cuyahoga County as an example. As we covered earlier, home prices there have consistently climbed in the post-2020 world, and yet active listings remain extremely tight, still about 39% below summer 2019 levels and 55% below summer 2016. That kind of supply constraint makes it hard to argue we're anywhere close to a major price correction in single-family homes here. In Ohio, this is happening throughout the state. This quick clip from Jason Ferrier, also known as Ohio's housing nerd on YouTube, summarizes the situation perfectly. His channel is linked in the description below, but I just wanted to show you this quick clip that reinforces this storyline. Take a listen. There could be some distress, but nationwide, what's crazy is we need a lot more homes than that to cause any type of massive price problem, at least in my opinion. I mean, remember, we had 4 million homes back in 2007, 2008, and now just over a million. So if you added half a million, are you improving inventory? Sure. Is it a windfall? Yeah, it's a nice bump, but it's not going to completely cause the end of the world. So is Ohio in a housing bubble? Not yet. Inventory is rising, but we really need an explosion of new listings and desperate sellers in those new listings. At the same time, demand has to stay low. If all that ramps up and we see that for an extended period of time and inventory builds, we could see some type of bubble popping. But that's not to say that everything is rosy in the housing market because it's not. Affordability is still a massive issue. 
But it's not all good news. Some parts of the Northeast are starting to show signs of trouble, signs that could spread to the rest of the Midwest and Northeast. Take Columbus, for example. It's arguably the weakest of these northern markets and one of the first places showing a real shift. If you look at a Zillow price chart for the county, prices still look strong, but you'll notice that the market has gone flat recently. That might not sound like much, but it stands out compared to the other Midwest and Northeast areas that still show show steady growth. There's at least a slight slowdown, and Realtor.com data shows inventory in Columbus is now above 2019 levels, the highest for July since 2016. This isn't a Texas or Florida style inventory surge, but it's a clear sign that the rapid growth we've seen may be slowing down, and in a few of these markets, we're starting to feel the same kind of weakness we saw earlier in the South. Is this going to lead to a widespread weakening that tears apart the whole regional divide story? Nobody knows for sure, but right now we can clearly see the divide in this chart by Lance Lambert, which compares housing inventory in July 2025 to July 2019. The blue dots highlight the South and Pacific Northwest, while the brown shades show up across the Midwest and Northeast, making the split obvious. Columbus stands out like an island in the middle, a sign that the shift could be spreading. In the end, the chart is really going to show you how far the crash will spread in the coming years. Will it stay a regional divide, or will the bubble building for the last 15 years pop even in these Rust Belt cities and the Northeast? Ultimately, inventory will tell the tale. Because when the story of this housing cycle is written, it's not going to be interest rates or wages or even migration that gets the top billing. It's going to be inventory. Low inventory is what keeps prices inflated in the face of affordability collapsing. And once inventory starts to rise in a market that already looks fragile, that's when reality sets in. Sellers who thought they were sitting good start to panic, buyers start to pull back, and all the momentum reverses. That's what we're seeing in places like Austin, Tampa, and Phoenix. And if Columbus is any indication, that same shift may already be creeping into the Midwest. So keep an eye on those charts. They are the early warning sirens. The more you zoom in, the more cracks you'll start to notice. Neighborhoods that aren't moving, listings sitting longer, price cuts picking up. That's how it starts, slowly, then all at once. Thank you guys for watching. As always, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it. And if you're a buyer or seller anywhere in the Midwest or Northeast, please leave a comment below explaining what you're seeing in your specific region. And finally, once again, please take a moment to check out Ohio's Housing Nerds channel. It's linked in the description below.